Hey, what's up everyone? Glock9 here, and we're just hanging out today doing a little Q&A and playing Lawnmower Simulator. <laughs> this game is ridiculous. It's work. Literally, for me, it used to be. I used to work for Middletown Public Works in Jersey, and this is what I would do during the summer months. Cut the grass on the jug handles up and down Highway 35 and 36. Imagine coming home from work, cutting grass, and then, and then you play a game where you cut grass. <laughs> like, all night, you just can't get enough of that shit. Dream about cutting grass, and you get up, go back to work, cut some more of that shit. That's like a mass murder in the making right there. Imagine asking your kid to cut the lawn and he's like, come on, I'm busy. He's fucking playing lawnmower simulator. <laughs> It'd be about time to play whoop my kid's ass simulator. But anyway, let's get to this shit. The first question is from Astral Spiff. What motivates you to keep editing when you don't feel like it? Well, what motivates you to go to work when you don't feel like it? Uh, and this probably answers a bunch of other questions, which is, yes, YouTube is now officially my full-time job so you know when you have a job sometimes you don't feel like going but you gotta go you know so um, are there days when I don't feel like editing or recording yes there are but to overcome that I find uh, routine helps so uh, my routine is basically wake up have coffee work out eat breakfast shower second coffee and I'm ready to go so as long as I go through that routine I usually can defeat any kind of uh, feelings of I don't feel like doing this today and then I can just get that shit done all right moving along if you could bring back any old seven days to die feature which one would you choose I would have to go with action skills uh, and that is actually a part of the darkness falls mod and probably a bunch of other overhaul mods as well but basically what that is um, is the more you use something the better you get with it which in my mind makes more sense it makes the game more fun and interesting you know the more you use shotguns the better you get with shotguns I mean that's makes sense doesn't it <laughs> you know instead of just like reading a shotgun book and all of a sudden you're better with it or fucking just dumping a bunch of skill points into a shotgun perk and all of a sudden you're better with it uh, I would prefer action skills again which are the more you use something the better you get with it okay what inspired your I follow all gamers back quote uh, well it's like a win-win for me because I get to support other gamers whether they're doing it for a living or just for fun. And then my feed becomes all gaming related, which is what I'm interested in. And now I do follow people back that don't post gaming content. If they're constantly interacting with me and uh, just saying kind words to me, frankly, then I follow them back because why wouldn't I? You know, if you're supporting me, that's the least I can do is hit a fucking button on my phone and it makes people happy and if people are happy then I'm happy and we're all fucking happy <laughs> you know what I mean I do get some shit for it though sometimes because I miss notifications or some people follow me and they have private accounts I don't like to follow private accounts back because if you want privacy I'm gonna give it to you <laughs> you know so I get messages sometimes on Twitter and Instagram that's like they try to call me out you know Oh, I thought you followed all gamers back. And then I go to their profile and it says nothing about gaming in their bio and their, uh, their, their account is private. It's like, dude, I'm not a fucking mind reader. I don't know that you play PlayStation occasionally. <laughs> you know what I mean? So basically, I just want to follow back anyone who supports me so I can support them and show them a little bit of love. Because like I said, it's the least I can do. If cornmeal found you in everything it searched, do you think it would have the same reaction? Well, listen, if the universe is infinite, or if there are an infinite number of universes, then for sure there is one where some piece of corn, degenerate ass piece of corn from New Jersey, keeps finding one piece of Glock 9 in whatever it searches, and it's like, fuck! I don't need one piece and just takes me out and throws me on the ground and is like, fuck off. 
And, and it's selling t-shirts that say, fuck off Glock 9. That's, so yes. Yep. The answer is yes. Do you have anything in store for a possible comeback from your city life character? It would be really cool to see you do a sequel. Yes, definitely. I said I was going to continue that on into another series, and I meant it. I'm just thinking about how I want to do that, and I kind of think I know how I want to do that, and basically it would be Ghost Town again. I just don't know if I want to call it Ghost Town. But I think it would be really cool to go from living in a city to living in an old west ghost town. You know, the the kind of the transition there could be really fun. But I don't necessarily want to call it ghost town. I don't know, maybe call it like old west life or some shit. So still working out the kinks. But yes, my city life character is coming back soon. I've been watching you since Alpha 15. For those that don't know, Alpha 15 is what console is currently stuck in. And with 7 Days to Die coming back to console soon, what tips and tricks would you suggest? I'm monitoring the work on the updated console version very closely. I got my hands on a PS5, fucking finally. And believe me, when I tell you, I am... I will be purchasing the updated version of Seven Days to Die for console, and I will be bringing a tips and tricks video to the channel, Glock 9 style, for all the new players I'm sure that will be coming to the console version, and I will also be doing a series on the console version. An explosives only playthrough in Seven Days would be so awesome in my opinion. No guns, just big boom. You can call the series something like Short Fuse. <laughs> I think that's a fucking great idea. And you'd have to think it through a little bit. You know, do you just gift yourself a whole bunch of explosives right off the bat? That's probably the way to do it. Otherwise, you would have to allow for melee. You know, because it's going to take some time to get up an inventory of explosives and get to the point where you can craft explosives. But then, you know, most of the combat in the beginning is going to be melee. So I think the way to do it is just gift yourself a shit ton of explosives. But when those run out, you better be in a place where you can either start buying a bunch more from the traders or crafting more yourself. But overall, I think it's a great idea. Even if it's just a miniseries, could be a lot of fun. So I'm definitely going to be adding that to my book of ideas. New mom here, what's your best advice on being a parent? Also, do your kids know about your channel? Uh, yes, my children know about my channel. My older one, who is 12, watches the channel. My younger one, who is 5, isn't really into watching gameplay videos. He likes to play himself. You know, he's into Minecraft and Fall Guys and Fortnite. So, I tried to sit him down to watch, like, a Minecraft video. He'll watch like 30 seconds and be like, all right, I want to play now. <laughs> it just makes him want to play, you know, but he's five and everything is new to him. So that's probably why my best advice on being a parent. Listen, as long as your child or children are happy and healthy, that's all that matters. You know, just enjoy your days with them because time is a relentless motherfucker and it moves fast. One thing that might help is kids go through phases. We all did. Nothing is forever. Except for herpes. That shit's forever. We have yet to see you find a way to incorporate blockchain and non-fungibles in the community. Gang, gang, pug. Listen, I have no idea. You know, I know about stocks. I don't know about NFTs or blockchain. I am completely clueless on the subject. Now, I thought about it, you know, I think I mentioned something a while back when NFTs really first started hitting the scene and a lot of people were like, no, don't do it. It's, it's horrible for the environment. But now that, um, they're a little bit more mainstream, I understand there are technologies out there that aren't detrimental to the environment. So if anyone knows about this shit and knows what they're doing and is, is, uh, really up in that space, and wants to partner with me, 
and do some shit, let me know. I'm open to it. My email's glock9gamer at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out to me via email or on Twitter or on Instagram. Have you thought of playing different survival games or revisiting ones you've played before? Yes, absolutely. I plan on revisiting Grounded in September. That is when the game comes out of early access and will be in full release, so I want to check it out then. I plan on playing Conan Exiles soon. I've got a bunch of games on my wish list. Uh, Small Land, which is very similar to Grounded. Fractured Veil, vale, Sons of the Forest, which is this, uh, the sequel to The Forest. Uh, the Day Before, Drake's Odds, which is a survival game you play as an alien that crash landed on Earth. Looks fucking really interesting. Uh, Nightingale, and of course, Ark 2. So, yes, I know it's been really heavy on Seven Days to Die on the channel lately, but I do have plans on bringing different games to the channel very soon. What's the number one thing you'd save from your burning house? Well, I'm assuming this is family aside, right? Because of course my family, but let's say they're safe. What's the one thing I would save? I have this external hard drive that has like all of our pictures on it. From forever, from like all the way back to high school pictures we've saved and digitized and then plus all the pictures of my kids and our life before we had kids just it has all of our pictures on it that is what I would save if I could only choose one thing because everything else is just material bullshit that I could buy again I don't give a fuck burn it all down as long as insurance is paying who gives a shit I buy all new stuff you should do a all runner hard difficulty type playthrough hey that's a great idea I know I'll call it Nightmare. I bet you that'll be real successful. I bet you it'll be so successful that eventually I'll do Nightmare 2. Except I'll put a spin on Nightmare 2. Yeah, we'll live in the house on the hill. I'll call it Nightmare 2, House on the Hill. It's brilliant. Thanks for the idea. What do you like and dislike about being a YouTuber? I love it because I'm in complete control. You know, I take a lot of suggestions from the community, but ultimately, I'm the one who makes the decision. You know, ultimately, too, I'm the one who reaps the benefits or suffers the consequences from the decisions I make, which is just like running a business, and that's how you got to treat YouTube if you want to be successful. You got to treat it like a business. What do I dislike about being a YouTuber? Not much. It's pretty fucking awesome. I guess the one thing I would say is that it is kind of troublesome to know that my career is based on a website that I have no control over. At any time, YouTube can come up with some crazy new fucking rule or whatever that I have zero control over, and that is kind of scary. Uh, what's something you like doing other than video games? Well, the things I love the most are things that tune everything else out. Take everything else away, even if only for a brief moment. Playing the guitar, playing video games, drawing, and of course, numero uno, riding a motorcycle. That shit makes everything else go away and forces you to focus on the only task at hand, not dying. Now, I realize you said things other than video games, and I included video games in my answer. What are you going to do? I like fucking video games. I actually miss New Jersey. I know you make a lot of jokes about it, but I was wondering, did you ever enjoy apple picking when you were a kid? Listen, I love New Jersey. I know I talk a lot of shit about it. That's all I'm doing, is just talking shit and having fun. I grew up there. New Jersey will always have a place in my heart. And it's funny you say that, because my parents literally had an apple tree in their backyard when I was growing up. But I love it there. I love the people. I love the vibe. I love everything about it. And I've been all over the country. I've been to Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada. I've been to fucking Montana, Colorado, uh, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida, both the Carolinas, Virginia, of course, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island. I've been all over the place. If I had to choose... I choose Pennsylvania, I guess, because that's where I live now. But I'm not far from Jersey. I go there almost every weekend. How are you doing? Great. 
What's your favorite curse word? Fuck. Are you still planning on doing a Conan series? Yes. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Buy Netflix at $2 and sell it at $700. How spicy is too spicy? Personally, I think when it's spicy on the way out, <laughs> then it's too spicy. That's, that's right. That is the correct answer. If there was a threat of lawsuit against you for using Glock in your name or something, what would you change it to? Nah, they can't sue me for using Glock 9. Uh, they maybe, maybe they could if I was selling it, if I was making a profit off of the name. And that is exactly why I changed all my merch to G9. It's even called the G9 Store. They can't do anything if I want to call my fucking YouTube channel Glock 9. But if I was writing Glock in a specific way, maybe too close to their font on a shirt and selling it, I could possibly get a cease and desist letter. But like I said, I thought about that, and that's why I changed uh, all the merch to G9 instead of Glock 9. Because I don't want to make a profit off of the name Glock. Hypothetical, you're invited to a seven days themed Halloween bash. What's your costume? Man, that's a good one. Probably Kenny. I think I gotta go Kenny. Or Big Mama. Why did my dad not come back home after he went to the store for a pack of smokes? Matthew, I don't know, man. I, maybe this might make you feel better, though. And I, I'm not joking here, either. This is the truth. My great-grandfather, my dad's grandfather, did the same thing. <laughs> I swear to God. They were living in Brooklyn. They came from Italy. And one day, he was just like, uh, I'm going to go get the cigarettes and fucking bounced. He just went back to Italy. He didn't like it in America. And that's the truth. So, I don't know, maybe your dad also went to Italy. Even though your last name's Brown, so I doubt it. Do you ever just sit staring at your bowl of cereal-less milk in the morning? Now, you might be trying to call me out for when I said people who eat dry cereal are crazy. And if you are, great. That's awesome. Thank you for remembering that I said that. But you're saying cereal-less milk, which makes me believe you're talking about just a bowl of milk, which would mean I would put my milk in first before my cereal, and I don't do that because that's equally as crazy as eating dry cereal. Are we alone in the universe? Well, I don't think so. I think Neil Tyson said it the best. With the amount of space that we've explored, to say we're alone in the universe would be like taking a cup and scooping up some water from the ocean, looking in the cup and going, well, I guess there are no fish in the ocean. I mean, that's how crazy it is. Someone else said, which I don't remember who, there's two possible answers to your question. Are we alone in the universe? It's either a yes or a no. And both answers are equally terrifying. So I hope that helps you sleep at night. What do you look like? I'm not a weirdo. Well, all right, I am, but not like an anything to be afraid of, weirdo. I'm always just curious when I listen to someone talk for like a couple of years. Uh, I've posted plenty of pictures of myself on Twitter and Instagram, and I've posted pictures of myself in certain YouTube videos, but I get asked this a lot. So here's the latest picture I posted as me and my wife and my mother-in-law and my son just straight up ice grilling everyone on the walk back from the beach. Personal favorite G9 video of all time. First of all, what's up, Tim? Uh, Tim's a friend of mine. You might know him as much shit from Shit's Creek or from Winona Earp or from his latest show, Surreal Estate, which just got picked up for season two. Congrats, Tim. My favorite video of all time is probably the one I did on the history of New Jersey. And the reason I say that is because I had this idea in my head. I had it all worked out. I had this vision. And when I made it, it was exactly the way I had envisioned it. And when you have an idea in your head and you're able to bring that idea to life, there's no greater feeling. Which brings me to the next question. What is the meaning of life? I think it is to create. It seems to me that's what the universe is trying to do constantly. Just create things. It's like fucking endless possibilities, right? And when you do create something, 
whatever that is, a piece of music, piece of art, whatever. You know, if you like woodworking, building things with your hands, you have an idea or a vision in your head and you create it and you bring it to life, there's no better feeling in the world than that. And finally, what's your advice for someone just starting YouTube? I said it before, I'll say it again, you have to treat it like a business. You have to work your fucking ass off every day. You can't be like, I see this all the time, you can't be like, oh, I'm, I'm not streaming tonight or no video because blah, 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 some stupid fucking excuse. Listen, I know what it's like to not feel like doing what you have to do, but you got to get past that. It, you know, it doesn't matter how you fucking feel. You got to be able to put those emotions aside or work through them, develop a routine. Like I said earlier, that helps me. But you can't, if you want to be successful, you can't be like, ah, I'm not going to stream later because I have a headache or I'm not going to stream later because you basically just don't feel like it. So you just go and make up an excuse as to why you can't. You can't make up excuses. You can't. You have to just treat it like a fucking business. If you own a pizza shop, you can't be like, I don't feel like making pizzas today. You got to make the pizza. That's what it is. That's my best advice is treat it like a business. And the people that do, it doesn't mean you're going to be successful. But the people that are successful are the ones that treat it like a business and any roadblocks or obstacles in their way, they don't get discouraged. They just figure out a way around those obstacles. And that's all I got for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. Thank you so much for watching and all of the support. It really does mean a lot. You guys can follow me on Instagram or Twitter if you want. It's at Glock9Gamer. I follow all gamers back. Stick around for more Glock9 shenanigans, and I will catch you guys in the next video.